You are listening to the To and Out CFL Podcast, a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Grab some poutine and a double-double. It's time for the To and Out CFL Podcast. He's got it! Oh, baby! Every week, Travis Cura. That's yeah. great company, which is a different person. And Brazilian Tide. Hunters are people, too. Talk fantasy football, bring you the latest in CFL news, and sprinkle in a little bit of nonsense. Oh, nearly intercepted it ends! And it's over! Ready, set, hunt! And we are part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. It's Travis Cura and Brazilian Tide. Look at that beard on Ty. It is unkempt. You must be past the itchy stage, though, eh? Uh, as long as I don't wear my Under Armour turtleneck, yeah. Then you're then you're good to go. It Let's... Just, I also have a bald spot. <laughs> I see that. You know, weird. <laughs> <laughs> Less than one week to go till the big man comes down the chimney. I, I feel like I know what the answer is. Resilient... What do you think it is? My, I think you're going to say nothing. You hate them all. What's your favorite Christmas song? Uh, ACDC, Mistress for Christmas. Great answer. Great the answer. only answer. I'm an Elvis yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. And an honorable mention to Six White Boomers. Wow. Just because it's awesome. Wow. Of course you went for the ACDC. <laughs> wow, well, it's pretty obvious. Now, if Nickelback ever put out a Christmas album, look out. <laughs> This episode of Two and Out is brought to you by Park, Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Look, uh, we're back into the deep freeze in Alberta. Rates are up. Usage is up. So make sure you go to Park Power because you can... You can make sure that you're on the best plan with them, and it's really easy to compare rates with other companies, and it's also really easy to lock in to the the fixed rate. A lot of times, obviously, that is cheaper than the going rate. So if you can lock in on that, it takes like two minutes. You go to their website for their no-obligation comparisons, and switching providers is extremely easy in Alberta as well. Of course, you'll feel good knowing you're supporting a local business and helping give back to our communities with your utilities, bills learn more at parkpower.ca what's up it was so difficult to not make a two-minute joke <laughs> yeah there's a lot that ty can get accomplished in 120 seconds there's no <laughs> way to segue into this oh. man tragic news in the cfl and within the edmonton elks organization Christian Salisbury was shot in Memphis, Tennessee over the weekend, and he's gone. Uh, 25 years old, and it feels tacky to talk about the football impact of this, so we won't. But, man, condolences to everyone impacted, and I know... I know that gun control is big in the news. This is not the show for that discussion, but it just seems like... Yet another incident in the United States, and it just, when does it stop? Far too young and just needless, man, needless. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, and it's, you know, life just getting started at 25, yeah, right? Man. Like, man. you're out of college, you got your, your football career's getting underway, uh, probably not where he imagined it would be in the CFL yeah, yeah. versus the NFL. Right. But I mean, still getting to play football and play the game you love. And it's just uh cut short, man. That's a shocking development, shocking story from over the weekend. Our condolences to his family, his teammates and uh, yeah, everybody else affected by that. Uh, Going to this, going back a couple of weeks and talking about some of the news that has happened in the CFL, and one of the big ones I, I think was Brian Burnham hanging up the cleats. Uh, I think one of the best receivers we've had the pleasure of watching in our time as mm -hmm. CFL fans. One hundred and five games in the CFL, a catch 
and every single one of those regular season games. Jerry Rice can't even career. say that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Raiders. <laughs> what a remarkable career for him, over 7,000 receiving yards. That's fourth in BC Lions history. Uh, he's fourth in BC Lions history uh, in career receptions as well. But the Lions have had some pretty good receivers in I'm G. Murray Simon. Mervin. Yep, Swervin Mervin, the Manny yeah. Show, uh, Jim Young. So he's he's on a list of great receivers in that organization. Forty-two touchdown catches. Uh, he's caught touchdown catches from seven different quarterbacks: Lule, Rourke, yep, yep. Mike Riley, yep. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Buck Pierce. No, no. So here. We got Jonathan Jennings. Oh, yeah. We got Kevin Glenn. Everybody's caught a pass from Kevin Glenn, including defenders. <laughs> we got Danny O'Brien uh, oh. and Brandon Bridge. But I think one of the things to say about Brian Burnham is the tough catch. The contested, um, yep. Oh, the amount of highlight real catches that this guy made in his career was absolutely remarkable. It'll be uh, it'll be tough not seeing him with the Lions anymore. And I think what's also difficult is there wasn't much playoff success in his career. And I don't want to really rub it in here, but uh, he played for some BC Lions teams that weren't the best. They until this past year. And this year he ran into a little bit of injury trouble here and there and was able to come back. But, man, if he played, and I know the Michael Riley years, if they had a better offensive line, I think yeah. the sky was the limit for Burnham in his career. But saying that, uh, with the quarterbacks and the teams he was able to play on and the numbers he was still able to put up, great yeah. receiver. And, and I think another thing, too, is with our age, you know, we weren't eight, seven, eight, nine, and and don't really remember or couldn't really appreciate it when it was happening. Yeah. Whereas you know, in our twenties and, and early thirties, you now late thirties or mid thirties. <laughs> yeah, my birthday. I'm closer to forty <laughs> now, man. Closer to forty. Uh, you know, we we kind of knew that. You know, after the first couple seasons and how things were projecting and, and going and, and the catches he was making. We could appreciate it more, and and you know knew that something great was happening, mm -hmm. which I mean, I, which I think makes a huge difference. Yes, you know when you're a kid, you kind of get like, your favorite yeah. player. It's always a memorable thing that's, that becomes your favorite player. That's maybe what gets you in love with the game, you know. And then as you as you get older, it, you're able to remember way more stuff and appreciate it when it's happening because you've seen it happen before and know that it is a step towards something big. Yeah. Last week, the CFL schedule was released. Now, just for my selfish tastes, I'm going to Montreal to see Metallica in August. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, last year, the Alouettes played about 15 games on a Thursday night. So I'm thinking, well, maybe they'll be there on the Thursday or the Saturday. No, they're the same night as Metallica night one at Olympic Stadium. Of course, the Owls playing at Percival Molson. Who knows if that's going to affect... Playing the Riders. Yeah, I know. That's it. That's two. Like, <laughs> it could have been any other team. They yeah. could have been on the road. But no, the, the Riders are in town. So, man. Which works out well. well because I don't have to go way. watch them lose. Maybe I could be yeah. uh, hanging out with the Riders on St. Catherine Street on the Thursday night. <laughs> I might be there. That might be funner than the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I might not even go to the game. I might just go to Shea Perry and post up. <laughs> that, now, that is my birthday weekend, and I only turned 35 once. Yeah, only once, man. Uh, you might be middle-aged or past that point by now. Uh, oh, way past. <laughs> I'm on the back nine. Coming, I'm coming down 18. <laughs> As he swigs a Coke. Uh <laughs> Got a dip into. <laughs> <laughs> One interesting thing about this schedule is that we've got Sunday football all summer long. And mm -hmm. last year, there was the accidental summer game between the Argos and the Riders because of the COVID postponement for the Riders. The ratings ended up being great. And 
looks like we're going to be seeing that. And one thing we see with this schedule is a little bit of consistency. All those Sunday games are 5 o'clock. And yeah, which is huge. Yeah, sometimes we hear that's the thing with the CFL schedule that people complain about is the inconsistency with the schedule. But Sunday at 5 o'clock all summer long, there's going to be CFL football on TV. And, you know, you won't go up against the Jays. So you can, you know, yeah. Jays game at 11 or 1, depending on the Sunday. And it rolls right into a football game all summer. I mean, it's kind of perfect. They're not competing because they know the Jays get a huge market. So, I mean, that's one of the smart things they do. And like you said, with the consistency, Fridays, well, you always have Friday night football. Well, is it a 5, 7, or an 8 o'clock start? If it's a double header, you know it's 5 and 8. And then if there's only one game, it depends on where it is. Like, if the schedule is just all over the place this way. They're not up against anything. Nobody, you know, the – the general public, you like Sundays isn't a busy day for work and stuff like that. Just makes so much sense. And then once the NFL fires up, it's gone. Also, it looks like there's going to be a game five o'clock every Saturday all season long after Labor Day. There will be a Saturday doubleheader at two and five, other than Thanksgiving weekend. So, I mean, I think this will be big for broadcasters. Fans will know when CFL mm-hmm. games are on. Uh, I mean. We'll start whining about the schedule more once we're in the middle of it and we find <laughs> it's dumb. It's dumb. The times are great. The schedule is dumb. And then and then we'll uh, we'll start complaining. Uh, not me personally. Uh, when we have November football again and uh, it's oh, cold. No, surprise, great. surprise. <laughs> yeah. Put on a jacket. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, uh, Jason Moss is the head coach of the Montreal Alouettes. <laughs> now, if I if I go on our Instagram page, I remember there was a reel I posted back in, was it September, August? One of the names floating around for the uh, head coach position in Montreal was Jason Moss, and you they, were excited. They had, so much, they, had, they had so much momentum. They made the well, playoffs. They hosted a playoff game. Here comes four and fourteen. Moss and, and Machocha go way back. Yeah, but man, it's not going to go well. well He's an it'll idiot. Be, it'll be <laughs> the moron. <laughs> How does he keep falling up though? That that that's like that's the question. I've, dude, <laughs> I, I fall up the stairs all the time. <laughs> I guess yeah, it's it's not. But he's probably tripping over his ears. <laughs> now, let's let's be honest. Moss has had good seasons as an offensive coordinator, but those seasons have come with Michael Riley, Henry Burris, and you could say he has had good seasons with Trevor Harris as well. So, is Harris going to stick in Montreal? Are, is, are they going to be able to be able to make some of those? He had some great seasons in Edmonton. There was still, I think, some of the inconsistencies there with being unable to finish drives and kicking field goals and that kind of thing. But they have been able to put up yards and mm-hmm. put up points and have success together, Moss and Harris. But we'll see if that's the combination for 2023. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the last year, this last season, was just so abysmally, abysmally bad. Yeah, that any bit of improvement is going to look amazing, right? Like it's going to look like bigger than it actually is. It's going to be a regression to the mean. I just don't have a lot of faith in how good it will be because we've seen Edmonton the lack of discipline. Yeah, and not only from the players, from him. Yeah. Emotionally, like, and everything on the sidelines, uh, you know, the play call selection this year. I know he was only a little C, but still, you know, how much is he going to have input into that kind of stuff? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I just, I know Machocha didn't want to return, but I just feel like this was an easy out for Machocha because they'd worked together before, and that's why he's there. And it's not a lot of there's, there's probably better options. Will it be like, you know, when Happy Gilmore is, like, trying to be a changed guy and he goes to throw the pin and then stops himself? Is that Here like comes Jason comes the putter throw. <laughs> Doug, kick him off the tour. Is that is that what Jason Moss will be? Like, looks at the uh, Gatorade jug and then 
No, no. The the PR simply, rep looks at him. <laughs> I simply tested its durability and then I placed it in the woods. <laughs> It's going to be among its family. <laughs> there was some Two rumbling. Two bikers off the, off, the, <laughs> off the 16th fairway having sex. <laughs> there was some rumbling during <laughs> Great Cup put, Week. You have to put an E on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that John Huffnagel would not be with the Calgary Stampeders next mm-hmm. season. Well, he's going to be with the Stampeders. But he's not going to be the general manager. Dave Dickinson is now going to be pulling double duty in 2023 anyway. He will be Calgary's general manager and head coach. So there still is that lineage. There still is that continuity in the Calgary organization. And, and Huffnagel's still there. He's still president yeah. of football ops. Like he's going to have they're, – they're, Dave isn't just going to completely take over. They're, they're still going to work together a lot. 90 on 99% of things. Uh, the director sure. of pl- player personnel, per- Brendan personnel. Mahoney, has been added as the assistant GM and the director of U.S. scouting, Cole Huffnagel, and uh, mm. director of uh, football operations, Nick Boja, will also get that take job. <laughs> more responsibilities. I-, I wonder how long Dave Dickinson will pull double duty for, and if maybe he does I it have for- a theory. Oh, what's your theory? He does it for like a year or two, and then Mark Killam is your head coach. I think that is kind of floating around right now. Mm -hmm. And then they keep him in the Calgary organization. And then again, the lineage, the continuity in that building remains. Yeah, it's just not fair. (laughs) It's almost like they know what they're doing. Yeah, almost. In Saskatchewan. We know who the offensive coordinator is now, and it is Kelly Jeffrey with the running backs coach with their first the, choice, obviously. <laughs> last year, there were some interesting comments. He was kind of talking about Cody Fajardo, and he was talking about Dane Evans, and said that he liked them both. It, <laughs> will Fajardo end up in Saskatchewan as of like an only choice? Seventy I, I thirty, probably. I don't think he'll be in. <laughs> I don't think he'll end up in Montreal anymore. <laughs> that seventy that thirty was a good one. <laughs> but but I mean, yeah, is Cody Fajardo going to be competing with Dane Evans for the spot in Regina? I mean, we obviously we still need that, to know about Bo, uh, but I don't yeah, think I, that's Bo's, Saskatchewan. Yeah. No, no. I, Bo is going to Toronto or Hamilton, depending on what happens with, with McLeod Bethel Thompson, and if if he decides he wants to you know, stay in Hamilton. Um, I don't know how many times we can beat this dead horse, but Dane Evans is not able to be a number one on his own. He said it. Yeah. Not in those exact terms, but he needs somebody to push him. If, if that means that it's him and Fajardo, okay. Does Fajardo want to come back? I mean, if, if it's his only chance to be a starting quarterback, then yeah, he's put, he's going to take it. He's going to take that money. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe maybe not a long term. Like we'll see a one or two year deal, nothing crazy. And you know, if he can improve, maybe he can leave and go somewhere else and get paid. He becomes a free agent again. But him and Dane Evans, just I, from what we saw last year, it can only get better, right? That's true for both of them. So yeah, okay, but my my expectations are lower than what my parents have for me, <laughs> and those are not high. Have you exceeded them? Oh, <laughs> wasn't hard. <laughs> First step: make it to grade seven. <laughs> once I once I cut the mullet, I think I was golden. You were golden. Yeah. Man, and you were what, four or five? Oh, I, I, I had the Billy Ray Cyrus ponytail in kindergarten, grade one, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And then <laughs> I found the Caesar haircut. And it, my life just transformed from there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting offseason in Saskatchewan. It, it's like everybody in that organization is on, you know. This this is, everybody's on lame duck contracts. Yeah. It, this is a, like the only way. I, I, I feel the only way Dickinson and 
uh, O'Day. O'Day keep their jobs is a Western final. Playoffs aren't going to be enough. The West is going to look uh, a lot different next year. We'll see in the next month or so uh, where Nathan Rourke ends up. It looks like it's the the workout tour all over the National Football League. I mean, is he going to get an offer in the next month or so? Hopefully, yeah, we'll know uh, before the new year or shortly after the new year. That might open up a spot for Fajardo. Who knows what BC wants to do? You really think you really position. think that he can beat out Pipkin? <laughs> Pipkin, yeah, VA, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> VA. Like, I don't think, I don't think BC is a landing spot for anybody right now if work doesn't come back. They're set. Well, speaking of the BC Lions, they've extended Nick McAvoy and Rick Campbell through Neil McAvoy, I should say, uh, through twenty twenty four, and but it's a pivotal moment for that organization too, isn't it? Now, yeah, I, like you're on the come up, you have to keep this momentum going. Yeah, I, I know. And you, and you might lose your number one QB. That's it. That's, that's a challenge. For yeah. If any team loses their number one guy, that's yeah. that's a big change. And they Remember were when the NFL to... had no respect for Canadian players and they could just stay up here? Yeah, that, I miss those a, days. That was a time. <laughs> you had to be, you know, six foot seven or whatever. But now yeah. uh, if you're short, it seems like you have a better shot in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, but even 6'2", I think, which Rourke is, is not necessarily short, but it's not 6'5". So no. <laughs> anyway, they were able to spend little on the quarterback position, which made the rest of the roster great. The, the defense did what they needed to do. They could force turnovers. They had a – I mean, this offensive line looked solid when Rourke was there, not so solid when VA was yeah. there. Funny how that works. But – they had a great receiving core, and they just had a, a great team that made it to the West Final. Now like you could, they could lose Rourke and Burnham in the same offseason. I know, and, I, and yeah, Burnham's money like that can go to somebody, whether it's you know another receiver or somebody on the old line. You can make improvements there, but those are two huge losses if Rourke doesn't come back. That totally is. So I mean, obviously, Rhymes is looking like if. They keep mm -hmm. him uh, poised to be the number one guy in the BC receiving core next year, which, I mean, he already was this year. He had a great yeah. year. Um, but there's going to be Kenny Lawler available in free agency. Where does he end up? And for how much? Yeah, exactly. I'm not exactly sure he's going to be able to get a raise on what no. he did in 2022, but he's going to command, I think, some big dollars. And maybe yeah. the receivers aren't going to get the big dollars like they got last off season and then if you talk about the landscape in the west i think winnipeg is going to be consistent calgary has a young core locked up they're going to get better and edmonton's going to get better yeah. too so saskatchewan it's there looking... is one team that is visibly last place in that division right now that's what it and looks that's, like that's even without work in bc yep i agree Steven Sorrells was the offensive line coach in Saskatchewan. He got a lot of flack as the season went on, but no. he's now joined Edmonton's coaching staff. So I guess he has a fan in Chris Jones. That's a, that's a probably gonna get him to play C, Probably going to get him to play DB too. And speaking of Edmonton, did you see that guaranteed win ticket that the Edmonton Elks are coming out with this year? <laughs> Of course, they've got 54,000 seats to play with at Commonwealth Stadium. <laughs> yeah. But it's a bold strategy. <laughs> Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> I love this. So how does it work? You buy a ticket, and if they don't win, you get a free ticket to the next I game? I think so. And it could possibly I mean, last all year long. I mean. <laughs> so the home opener in Edmonton is against Saskatchewan. Oh my god, if they sell out and they leave. <laughs> they're gonna, I love it. They're going to start charging for transit again. Because <laughs> like after the games, the cops are like, yeah, whatever, just go. <laughs> I love this idea. I, I think it's a ton of fun. I would win uh, a game first. That's it. At that's home. It. Before that's I it. came up with this idea. 
Hey, cut the racket out down there. That's my wife downstairs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I think this is fantastic. Uh, what a great idea. I mean, hopefully the Elks win a home game. This has I, to be the like, year. <laughs> you know, Victor Q has done, or Quee, sorry, has done so many good things since he's taken over. Uh, this is just one where I hope it fails for another year. Just, just yeah, for the yeah. content. And then, you know, maybe they bring it back next year. But like, if they lose every home game, it's almost comical. And then they'll be like, well, the tick tickets for free. We might as well go tonight too and drink drink 15 yeah. beer at $8 or no, at like $11 a piece. <laughs> Places sold out, teams, you know, 4 and 13 with the last home game of the year. So if they win that, if they lose that game, does everybody get free tickets to the home open <laughs> the next year? I like, guess this is like, and, and everybody paid. Thirty dollars, like. Hey, if you get a season ticket for you know thirty bucks, thing, you, do I get a refund <laughs> if they lose? Oh. Do I get a credit on my account? <laughs> yeah, I want I want the check in the mail. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, is by the, the year. way. Thanks, Scott Mo. <laughs> this is the year that the Elks win a home game. It has to be. Has to be. What if it's an odd travel? Well, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, we always thought, like, you know, the t the TV deal is what keeps this league afloat. The gate doesn't hurt. No. I mean, if you're gonna, you lose that first home game, you're losing yeah. probably 50% of the gate the next game. It's just a very... I, I know they say bulletin board material can be it's not crap. a thing. I get it can't be a thing. You can't measure it. I understand it. But when when the riders buy billboards outside of Commonwealth Stadium, that adds to it. it, <laughs> it I think that's more between that that fuels the fan right, robbery, right? For sure. And we have used some choice language in Commonwealth. And when I say <laughs> we, I mean specifically myself. And then I hide behind Travis. <laughs> but like, do you really think that the riders are like, yeah, let's screw this team over out of their out of their gate next game? I, I, the players don't care. The players are the players want to win no matter what. Yeah. Now, yeah. If if the riders are up by ten with two minutes to go, are they going to chirp about it? More than likely. Yeah. More on than the field, likely. Right, because everybody yeah. knows about it now. The riders probably going to say some stuff on the field. Maybe CFL Wired picks it up. Will they play it? Probably not. <laughs> but I just the bulletin board material I don't buy. But I just I just want it to happen for the for the comedic value. Yeah, it, but it I, would be. I funny. don't want to see a team suffer fiscally and, and you know be in trouble that way and have to be kept afloat. But I mean, even <laughs> give me one. Just give me the first game of the year. It's yeah, hilarious. I agree. I agree. The worst part is they get 54,000 and get like 10,000 a week too. <laughs> and everybody's like, where's all these free tickets? <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some player news. First, uh, Chase Brown playing with Illinois wins the John Cornish Trophy. Second in the NCAA in rushing. He had over 1,600 yards. He had over 300 carries. Uh, playing in the Power Five, his second consecutive thousand-yard season. So, congrats to him. It's the Big Ten. <laughs> Nathan Nathan Rourke's brother Curtis finished mm -hmm. second in voting, and actually Chase Brown's brother Sydney, twin brother DB for Illinois, finished third. And if you remember last year. There were several twins in the CFL draft, and these guys will probably have NFL success. Or if they come to Canada, I don't know what it is with these twins that are good at football. Like, what's in the water, man? You have somebody to practice against. I guess that's true, yeah. Right? That's why I can never play sports. I didn't have anybody to shoot on, anybody to throw to. <laughs> nobody to teach me how to throw. <laughs> it's a way to make us feel sad going into Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some extensions. Tis the season for extensions and one-year deals. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have extended running back Jamal Morrow, defensive lineman Charbel DeBeer, and 
Roland Milligan, uh, they signed him for two years. I think he was one of the lone, consistent, bright spots in the Rough Rider defense. He was all over the place. And if you wear number zero and you play well, you're good in my books, man. Omar Morgan. Yeah, another. Any zero? Like, you can't be bad and wear number zero, right? No. no. Wow. <laughs> Maybe you get yeah, assigned no. it. <laughs> yeah. You get assigned zero? I wouldn't. They probably expect you to suck. I, I wouldn't find a place to live. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in the hotel until your per diem runs out. We, we do know that Bo Mitchell has houses in five different CFL markets, but. <laughs> like, tell me that the CFL media doesn't respect you without telling me the CFL media doesn't respect you. Yeah. <sighs> Kicker Sean White remains in BC. He had a great year last year playing in the friendly confines of BC Place, so he's going to stay there. Ottawa has made several extensions, a lot of Canadians on that uh, list as well. Uh, public enemy, I, maybe number two in Saskatchewan, Dino Boyd remains on the offensive line for the Red Blacks. Uh, Jackson Bennett, Justin Howell, Nigel Romick, Ty Cranston, and Nate Bahar, who had a great year last year, 59 catches, 727 yards, two touchdowns. He's sticking around for two more years in Ottawa, and I think he made a lot of fans, especially ranting to the media after the you-know-who yeah. incident. <sighs> yeah, that's that's a whole other <laughs> issue, but, you know, they're building a core in Ottawa. Bob Dice is in there now. He's getting his shot. These guys love to play for him, man. And you've never heard a bad word about him from another coach, another GM, yeah. another player, anything. I think the guys are going to run through a wall for him. Will that translate into wins? It ha it has to at some point. Uh, if Masoli is healthy, that offensive line can protect him, and he's able to stay healthy. I think they've got a shot, an outside shot at a playoff spot. And 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 we talk about continuity all the time. It's not only in the front office; you got to have it on the field yeah, too. Yeah. And so you know, keeping these pieces together like they have, I mean, that if if the players are good. You don't want to keep guys around just to keep guys around. If they're players you can use and 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 put into your schemes and and they can play the game well, you're gonna to have to pay a little more to keep them. But if you can create that continuity, it makes it just so much easier to just plug pieces in when you need to. Winnipeg continues to lock up veterans, including Winston Rose, uh, defensive back Jake Thomas, defensive lineman, and Kyrie Wilson in the linebacking core who actually had an Achilles injury in the fourth game of the season, missed the rest of the year, but he's staying in Calgary or Winnipeg for one more year. Speaking of Calgary, Reggie Bagleton re-ups. He had 85 catches, 957 yards, and six touchdowns last year. They're also keeping Canadian Colton Hunchak and Montreal re-signing long snapper Pierre-Luc Caron and defensive back Nafis Lyon. Toronto keeping a couple off of linemen around in Trevon Tate and Isaiah Cage. There's going to be a lot more um, signings over the next little while. Valentine's Day is when uh, free agency officially opens, and we're going to so be. So, when do the roster cuts come? Oh, the bonuses. For bonuses. <laughs> Those, I think, sometimes they happen February first. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we're going to be seeing that happening. Uh, this time around, and we're all going to be watching Nathan Rourke. Where's he going to go? Is he going to get a legitimate offer from the NFL? He's, he's been working out all over the place. Hopefully the foot isn't hindering him in those workouts, mm -hmm. but he's a busy guy over this next little while. And teams, I mean, I don't think, I, I'm trying to think of like teams that are going to be in the market and like the Raiders, their car yeah. coming back, I don't know. Kyler Murray, the new Call of Duty came out. He's done. <laughs> so there are teams, and, and like there's so many quarterback free agents that he might be able to find a spot, maybe not as a starter, but I think he'd get a legitimate shot as the backup, yeah. put the clipboard behind somebody for a year or two, and maybe get some reps. 
This episode of 2 and Out brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. And Alberta Blue Cross understands that running a small business is tough. And they understand that business owners in Alberta are busy. So let Alberta Blue Cross give you peace of mind with a group benefit plan. They offer health, dental, life, and disability coverage for your employees. And Alberta Blue Cross group benefit plans are easy to manage anywhere, anytime, and on any device, making it easy for you you and your employees to access. To learn more and explore your options, head to ab.bluecross.ca. Well, there we are. The last episode of Two and Out of 2022. A dumpster fire of a year. (laughs) Tell me about it. Will 2023 be any different? Probably not. I I guess one of the good things is that gas prices are going down. It's basically free. (laughs) <laughs> free <laughs> it's only a dollar 24 here yeah i filled up for buck 20 yesterday uh usa the, the, no i you oh. know what man last time i went there was more than the gas station across the street so that's I, how they get you yeah i, I shredded my card it's goodbye to them you did not i didn't shred it but it's in the back of my wallet with my blockbuster card and my <laughs> your your Costanza wallet, all the receipts, <laughs> the big salad. Have yourself a merry Christmas, a happy New Year. Stay smart, stay safe. We will talk to you the first part of 2023. Will there be stuff to talk about? Probably. Are, are we recording New Year's Day, or are we making a better life decision than that? Uh. We can record on the second, maybe. Oh, thank God. (laughs) I had my work Christmas party last night, so. Yeah, and you also slept until 2 p.m. today. That's true, so that (laughs) did help. (laughs) (laughs) You can rate, review, and subscribe to your two and out on your favorite podcatcher. A like, comment, and ring the bell on YouTube as well. We will talk to you in 2023. Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter.